Hey, Tony, did you leave the audience someplace? Because I haven't seen them. Um, did you check the car? No, I haven't checked the car. They might be in the box. Let's check the box and see if they're in there. Hey, look, there's the box. Hey, guys. Welcome to View Camera. We're out on location today. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, setting up our camera for the first time in the wilds of Virginia. So come on out and come on along. And welcome to View Camera with Michael Wessel. That is me. We're going to be looking at our scene today and setting up a view camera on a location. So let's get started with setting up our tripod, then we'll put the camera on top of it and move on from there. Start with the tripod. We want to make sure that our tripod is ready to go, so we're going to undo the legs here. Also, uh, before I even go any further, I need to make sure that on the, um, on the bottom of my feet here that I've got right now, the rubbers are out. I need to make sure that the spikes are out. Since this is nice soft ground and I wanna be able to keep the camera a little bit more steady. But just remember though, if you go in and you're working indoors to put, uh, put your uh, rubbers back down so you don't damage floors. Extend my legs out. Now, it depends on your height, the height of the subject where you want the placement of the camera, wherever you want the camera in, in, uh, in your imagery, uh, the height and everything, that'll be up to you to make sure that you set the camera up to the specific height that you want it to be. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the tripod into our uh, space that we're gonna be shooting in. Um, here, we'll set up uh, our model in just a minute, but let's get the camera added to our tripod after we make sure the tri tripod's level. So our next step is to level the tripod. And centered. So we've got our tripod nice and centered now. Um, and our legs are nice and uh, level. So let's go to the top of our tripod. Let's make sure it's level and that everything is locked down. So when we put our camera on here, the, uh, the head won't move on us as, uh, as we put the camera on. That would be a bad thing. The camera can actually fall then. I'm going to point the uh, back of the uh, head here towards my subject matter. Now that I have it uh, somewhat level, and we'll get the camera out of the bag. So we're going to open up our bag here. And inside of our bag, we have our Horseman 4x5 camera. This is a rail camera. Um, particularly, you can use a field camera out in, in this kind of situation. It's a lot lighter than the, the rail camera is, but this is the camera that I have and that I use all the time for shooting 4x5. We're gonna use both hands. We're going to put the front of our quick release into place. Uh, making sure that the ground glass is facing back towards our um, pan handling for vertical panning uh, back here at the back. And then we'll plop, pop this into place. Once it locks into place, we'll make sure that we push this uh, release lever just a little uh, in to uh, make sure that it's nice and tight. And then we have our tr camera on our tripod. I've got a bag bellows on here. It's not something I typically use for this. Uh, it's the only bellows for this particular camera that I have. So I'll have to make sure that the bag bellows stays out of my shot when I'm uh, shooting, uh, just in case I have them spread out and it starts to sag in a little bit. Um, so um, a regular bellows is a little bit better for this type of shoot. We've also got on this camera right now for a lens. If I come around here and take a look on the lens, it's a 210 millimeter lens. That's a um, narrow focus lens uh, for doing uh, 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 or telephoto lens that we're going to be using. So what we're going to do is we're going to now set our lens here so that we can uh, focus on our model. Uh, let's uh, start by actually uh, moving the aperture release up so that the uh, aperture or the aperture inside here becomes open or the shutter release. 
opens up and uh, we can actually see uh, we'll be able to see through the camera this way but we also need to move the aperture here to maximum aperture just by sliding this over so that the lens is as open as it can be so that we can easily focus on our subject so introducing our model Tony Tony is going to come in and Tony is going to be our model for today introduce yourself Tony hello this is Tony. We're going to uh, get him in frame here, looking through the camera. To do this, we're going to need a couple of different, uh, we're going to need two more things. We're going to need a hood to be able to put over the top of this to keep any glare off of the uh, ground glass back here. Our image will be in upside down in the back here, so we'll need to actually make, uh, since this will be our first uh, time shooting the camera and um, for this, uh, notice that your image is upside down and you'll actually need to rethink how you focus the camera or look at the uh, image and composition of the camera. We also need to make sure that we sh when we're shooting that we stay within the parameters of a four by five. There is a grid on the back of this. That grid will help to actually um, uh, show us where our edges of our frame will be. So we'll uh, pay attention to that here on the back of the camera. Once we uh, have our model in place, and it looks like he's somewhat in place right at the moment, we're going to look at focusing. So, like I said, we're going to need a couple of things. We've got our hood. This is uh, a hood that I have that I've used for quite some time. I've got uh, my light meter, and also I have a loop. The loop is for looking through to on our, onto our, the back of our camera here. Uh, this particular one is blackened all the way through, so it actually is a lot easier to use in the field uh, when you've got a little bit of glare hitting the back of it. Uh, you can actually uh, see through it a little easier. Uh, still, the hood is going to be necessary for the glare, coming, uh, keeping the glare off the back of the camera. We've also got our light meter. I'm going to stick, uh, put the light meter around my neck here so I can uh, have it ready. We've got our loop, and let's get it, this thing in focus and check our composition. So I'm going to put uh, my uh, hood over my head. We're now going to look through our ground glass to get our focus on our model. To do that, we're going to, we've got um, our ground glass. We're going to focus the camera. To get, um, so we're going to use our focusing knob here. We're going to look through our magnifier here. So we'll put this on here and look through. And while we're doing this, looking through, we're going to actually grab the uh, focus knob and focus our camera. And once it's in focus, we'll tighten down our focus and we are ready to go to our next step. And I'm ready to take my shot. I've got my composition the way I want it set up in the frame here. Uh, I'm ready pretty much to uh, go, uh, go about shooting here. I'm going to set this mode to sun on my meter, not the flash because I'm not using a flash uh, or a flash corded, but to the sun. My ISO on this particular film that we're going to be using is ISO 25. We're going with really slow shutter uh, ISO here. It'll be a really fine grain um, image uh, with the uh, film. So we've got a tw uh, 25. I need to set the ISO. So I push the ISO button and uh, using the toggles here, I set this to 20, ISO 25. Once it's at 25, I've got my ISO. I've set it at 15th of a second. So we're going to take a meter reading and see if this, how this works. And uh, I'm at 5.68, uh, which is what the meter says, which is a, a close enough to eight. And I've got a fourth of a second. That's pretty slow. So Tony's going to have to stand pretty slow. Uh, pretty still. I could also get motion blur if I wanted by having to move and we're going to do that for one of the shots. So now let's take and look at our lens again um, so that we can actually take our shot. So first of all we need to set according to our light meter here um, our speed of our light meter says that we are at a fourth of a second so let's set this to a fourth of a second for our shot. Um, our aperture is going to be at f8, so we're going to move this over to f8. Once we have those in place and we've got our meter reading, we need to make sure that we shut down the lens so that the lens is no longer open. We've got the release uh, shut down again. We're going to cock the shutter. And just as a precaution, we're going to take one shot here without taking, putting the film in. 
just to make sure that the app or that the camera fires properly and then let's recock the shutter and now let's go to the back of the camera and take our first shot we're going to dig into our bag here and find a, a, a film holder one that is completely that hasn't been shot and this will be this film holder right here both sides are white so we know that this is ready to go we're going to set take this and put this load this into our camera by pulling the back open just a slight bit sliding the film holder in directly like that try not to move the camera as much as possible once you have it in place we're going to move the lock off of the front um, the one that the uh, slide that's towards the lens we're going to pull the slide out and then once we're ready we're going to have tony pose so tony would you take a pose let's uh, have you uh, do the whole oh this is such beautiful out here and we take our shot once we are done taking the shot make sure that the black of the slide back here is going towards to, uh, the lens slide that back in and then lock it back into place we're going to do three exposures with this so that's our uh, correct exposure according to the meter but it could be off a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, two more uh, exposures, one at a lower um, f-stop and one at a higher f-stop, just to make sure we have a good we have good imagery. Our next film holder, we're going to do our uh, separate exposures here. So we're going to put our sli uh, slider film holder in. We're going to go to our aperture this time and change the aperture to uh, 6.8. We're going to pull the slide. And once we get the locks out of the way, take our shot put our slide back in place have Tony take another pose and we got one more one more shot here Tony and this time we're going to go from F uh, uh, up to F11 and we're going to take one more shot and we'll turn our slide to the black side again facing towards the lens push that in and now we have our last two shots there with um, different exposures so we've uh, set up our camera taken some shots we've had our uh, model pose we're going to continue shooting uh, out here uh, for a little bit uh, with our view camera while we have it out but uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and we'll uh, show you how in the next scene how to actually tear down now we're ready to put our camera away and get uh, get going out of here so we've already finished our session we've got our camera we need to put it away we're going to uh, first uh, we're going to release both of the um, uh, the focus knobs here and put this back into the zero position once the uh, once the two standards have met and are close together uh, we've got it into zero making sure also that uh, your standards are straight up and down and that you don't have any movement still on the camera once we're at that point what we're going to do now is take the uh, cam uh, the camera off the tripod to do that we're going to release the knobs down here making sure i have one good grip on uh, the uh, one side lift up gently on the back side here and then take the camera off and we'll put this into our box and close her up once we have our box ready and the camera put away then we can put the tripod away so all we've got to do is lock up our, our unlock our legs push them back in together Our feet back or our legs back in place if you need to adjust your feet uh, to get rid of the spikes uh, we're clean off your spikes you can uh, once you're done and we are ready to go and get out of here for the day thanks for coming and watching our view camera series with Michael Wessel we'll be back again uh, in another session to talk about darkroom film and developing I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time